Well guys, your days of waiting have finally come to an end. You're ready to see my epic toolbox tour. Everybody that has been subscribed to my channel has been clamoring for the last couple of weeks that they really want to see this thing. I showed you guys getting it off the truck. I showed you guys assembling it. I know I got a lot of comments saying, oh, why didn't you have your Snap-on guy put it together for you? But what kind of awesome content would that be giving you? Hey, look, I'm going to take some video of my Snap-on guy putting my box together. Pretty sweet, huh? No, no, it's not. So you guys got to see that portion of it. Now you guys got to get to see how all the hours and stuff that I put into switching everything over, organizing, putting into, you know, whatever, organizing this box and making it mine making it unique, which is what I love doing. I really appreciate you guys staying in tune and being very patient with me. And when I say patient, I mean not very patient at all. I haven't been able to put out a single video recently without you guys all clamoring and saying, when's the toolbox store? I'm ready to see this toolbox store. Come on, man, just show it us. So it's finally here for you. You're ready to see the big boy, the 84 inch Epic Snap-on toolbox tour. And also, I want to make sure you guys stay tuned to the very end because I am going to be doing a giveaway with this one also. I've reached over 5,500 subscribers on my way to 6,000 here real soon, and I can't do that without you guys. So, I'm going to be giving away this new Snap-on, uh, it's like a work shirt. It's got pockets in the front, collar, and the Monster Power Tools. So, I'm going to be giving that one away. Make sure you stay tuned to the end where I'm going to show you exactly what you need to do to get in on the drawing for that. So, without further ado, here she is. Stay tuned. Ultimately, every single day when I come into work, this thing is here to greet me, and it's one of the most awesome, amazing feelings in the world, especially when I get to do this. I get to use my new Echo locks. Make sure you have tuned into my last video where I showed you how to uh, program these as well, if that's something that you needed to look for, and we're going to go more in depth to this one as well, but locking and unlocking, it's just so satisfying. So let's get involved here. So first thing, we come to open our hutch and our lights automatically turn on. This is thanks to the Snap-on 52 inch, I believe, LED light bar with the control module hooked up here and the magnetic switch, which is attached to the end of the hutch door. When it comes to it, makes contact and it turns our light on. I'm going to wait a little bit and I'm going to go in depth on the computer, but the other thing that we had to do here in the hutch is there is really no place to get and put our longer, our ratchet tools, our electric and air ratchets. So I stole this off of my other one. Uh, this is another accessory that normally comes in a regular power cabinet and it was able to go in the slots and dots to hold my ratchets because in the other power drawers here, there's not really a good place to hold them as we'll find out here in a little bit. So there's that. This is where I keep my old repair order sheets from previous weeks to show what hours I do. A shelf to hold a couple little things right there. And then my light. This is the snap on light that I use. Magnetic on the bottom, flips around. And then the charging ports for my iPad and my light for everyday use. So that is in a nutshell, the hutch area right there. First, we're going to go into the right side cabinet. One thing that I'm not sure if I really like or not is in these hutches, they've or the cabinets, they've got three magnets, one there, there, and there, and they are very strong. So this thing takes a lot of effort to open. So I think what I might end up doing is I might end up taking one of the magnets out just to make it a little bit easier to use. 
I know first off I'm going to be pointing out a lot of things that I have picked up that I really don't like about this. First thing is going to be when you open one of these cabinet doors, these things staying open is kind of a pain. So I ended up putting a bungee cord between here so it doesn't swing back and bang into things and end up scratching my door. I don't want that to start off. So I put the little bungee cord there. And I apologize because the I do have lights in here that I've put up inside and we got the correct switch model modules ordered but for some reason they didn't come with the actual switches. So we have the light the module but no switch and no magnet. That figures. So I apologize for lack of light but we got a light here. So first drawer is my fluids that I come to. I've got them all organized out in trans ATF cleaners everything extra fluid that I need because every once in a while the parts department does not have fluids in stock they run out you know if anybody knows Mopar they're always on back order so I've got a nice little extra plethora of them just in case a couple extra filters paints the nuts and bolts grab bin whole can of like a uh, 10 millimeter bolts because everybody knows those 10 millimeters are on everything Back in here, I've got the bag and the instructions and the add-ons for our Zeus, some cleaners, some random stuff I don't have, you know, just really have a need for, but that's that one because this one does not slide out. The top two do, the middle one does not. So then here on the bottom, we have four more. These all slide out. So with this one, I have all of my electrical test switches. Yeah, you can yell at me for being a parts hoarder, but all of these parts are known good parts, so rather than waste the extra time of going and looking up wiring diagrams, outputs, inputs, PIDs, whatever, I can just plug in a known good part if I have one. Extra coils, tip -em units, Chryslers are known for having those go out. A couple little trans pieces and parts, you know, just those things that I may need down the road for test bin parts. Uh, kind of an empty drawer here. Uh, I got some of my future video parts, some glow plugs for the old Dirty Max. Um, then we have some thin lug nuts here, standard lug nuts, locks and keys that we need, and some tire pressure issue sensors. There we go from that. Then my favorite drawer. This is really one of my favorite drawers because it's something that the parts department doesn't ever, ever carry in stock. They're repins for a lot of different connectors. There's probably 75 different ones in here. We obviously live in the rust belt, so a lot of connectors get a lot of corrosion issues. Corrosion gets into the connector, you either have to find you know, a pin, which is in here, or nobody ever has in stock, or you have to get a whole new pigtail connector, order it, and that's like 50 to $75 for you know, depending on what connector you need. So I'd rather have these in stock for any customer and it makes it easy. And then last is just paperwork, instructions, some receipts, a bunch of these old remotes that I have no use for. These remotes, if anybody orders the Echo Locks, they uh, are more along the lines of paperweights for all the extra ones. When I ordered them, each section this one, this one, this one, and this one all come with echo locks. So, of course, each one comes with two remotes. But each one of those modules is only able to program two remotes at a time. So, what happens with the other six? They're paperweights. I'm going to keep an extra one for, you know, just in case one of mine break, but that's about all I can do. I guess just a premise before going on to the next section is when I went from my blue box to this one, my blue box I had a separate power cabinet off to the side that didn't have the power drawer in the standard box. So this box has the power drawer in it. So I lost a little bit of, I guess, number of drawers. The drawers in this box are bigger, but I lost a number, you know, two extra drawers. So I had to consolidate just a little bit. So a lot of the tools that you saw on the last tour are going to be the same, but maybe a little bit better organized just because I had to consolidate room. That socket drawer. I know I can consolidate, consolidate this one. 
because of the plastic case, but I'm trying to find a rail that I really like. I'm waiting on a couple of other manufacturers to come out with one. Uh, it's in the works. We'll, we'll see that here in the next couple months. Metrics, standards, large sockets all the way across the back, standards, metrics, metric impacts in 3 8 the swivels, which are probably the most used socket that I have are these metric swivels. I use those on just about everything. Torx, all my uh, extensions that are the Wobble Plus. If you guys have extensions, nothing compares to a Wobble Plus. You can put your socket all the way onto the end of it or you can back it off and you can have just a little bit of wobble to give you a little bit of extra play if you have a straight socket. So those makes my job a whole lot easier. Over to quarter inch we have the uh, e-torx standard metric quarter inch swivel sockets a couple of magnetic ones for doing a couple of the recalls that we have inside dashes where you have to reach way up in there and get a bolt started these I'm going to have to complain to snap on about because they are probably one of the easiest lost sockets and they are freaking expensive. God are they expensive. I know snap ons already outrageous on prices and some things but these, this 10 millimeter right here, $49 for a quarter inch 10 millimeter that everybody knows is bound to walk off because it says 10 on it. But you know. We'll complain about that later. Wobble pluses in the quarter inch, and then all of my ratchets. The flush mount one, quarter inch, couple of them with a the swivel, uh, standard non-flex, and then my custom ratchet with the instinct grip that I had made. That thing is awesome. I love it. I don't like using it in dirty situations just because I want to keep her looking fancy. Got my other 3 8 ones with the swivel head half inch, three-eighths long extension, and the big mamma jamma right there, the long breaker with a swivel head as well. So that is the top drawer of goodness. We're going to move on down to the next one. This one got a little bit more jam-packed from the last time. We've got screwdrivers, long screwdrivers, miscellaneous pry, um, bit drivers, pry tools, scrapers, and such. Got the pick set, and I know this one's missing, and then I've just got my trim tool in there. I've got the flat blade hose picks, standard round hose picks, long extended picks. These are for doing like down into the transmissions, getting down and getting clutches out. That makes it really nice for those. Baser brush for when I need to base my turkey. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but we've got Torx, mirror, small picks, got my Allen key set here, and then I've had to stuff these, this things I've had into another drawer before, so I've kind of just put them in here. Um, all my feeler gauges, my measurement equipment, so those are pretty nice. Uh, do have the torch and this is my old soldering iron torch, the butane soldering irons. This is the newer one. This is the old one. This one kind of took a shit. The only thing that I have to complain about this version of it is when you have the standard flame tip on it, it does not actually put out a flame. So if you're looking on getting a flame out of this thing, you are not going to get it. So it works great for the solder tips, but if you're looking to get a flame for melting or doing something along those lines, it's not going to do it. Got some brake tools in here. My slide hammer seal puller, which I absolutely love. Not a snap-on tool, but great tool to have. So, there's that box of goodness. And moving on to the next one. Third and final long drawer is going to be the pliers drawer. This one does have a little bit of room to grow, which is nice because I'm going to be getting some more here soon. Long hose uh, pliers, those things are really nice for getting heater core hoses off. Small tiny pliers, these are normally for like beading or whatever. You get these at Joann's or Craftsman or something like that, but these are nice for getting in little tight spots. All my specialty 
pliers are back here. The hose clamp, the remote ones, the snap-on ones are awesome. I've had them replaced once just because the cable kind of stretches, but they're really great. Snap ring pliers galore. Got some electrical pliers there. I know I can consolidate this for a lot more if I put some more of these racks in, but I don't need to right now. That's the point of getting this box is to have a little bit more room. So I have this nice and organized and I know where things are at. You got the um, the PWZ line, the 20 inch. This thing is a godsend for doing alignments, getting those hard to turn alignment um, components turned. That's super sweet to have. All the vice grips, my clamp vice grips for doing calipers. Well organized drawer, just like everything should be, with a little bit of room to spare. So we're going to close this one. Another thing I like to point out is how well these things slide. The slides on these are just like butter, and the thing I love about the Epic series is the handle and that sound. The thing that guys love about certain shotguns is just that rack. That's the sound I love to hear. Drawers close, close nice and easily. Here on the right hand side, the smaller drawer, this is where I have a lot of my extra uh, paperwork, CDs, test DVDs, old remotes because we have a guy that takes the cores for those and we turn them in. Get a little bit of extra cash here and there. Got my bits drawer and kind of a nonsense drawer. One of the future things I'm going to do is all of these bit sets. They're all like halfway there, you know, missing things here and there, and that drives me insane. So I will eventually throw all those out and get some real sets. The one thing I did do this week was instead of having, you know, these mismatched drill bit sets that have, you know, half the bits missing, I did buy a nice snap-on drill bit set at the little tool convention, tool conference thing that we put on. So I finally have a nice, nice set of drill bits. I'm super excited about that. That way, if I ever do, you know, mess one up, I've got that awesome drill doctor. I'll show you guys here in a little bit, and we're gonna keep a really good, nice set in there. This is another one of the drawers that I kind of had to consolidate with another one. So we've got a couple of things mixed in here. My stethoscope, a couple other diagnostic tools, um, the blue point temp temperature, the laser thermometer, hot glue gun. Yes, we do use hot glue for some of the conversion van components on the interior. It's kind of kind of weird, but yes, they are used. Stethoscope for finding, you know, those hard to find engine noises some safety glasses and UV glasses, UV lights for finding air conditioning issues. Hear that sound again? Ah, oh, so good. Cases galore in here. Yeah, I know I've got, that's a compression tester and of course the air compressor is gonna click on. So fast forward through that. Get you guys on a pod because I really wanna go through this drawer. This is some of the cases and things that I have. This one's a compression tool. This one is a cooling system filler, which works great, especially when I have to use my uh, the filler tool the, that we'll see here in a little bit. I use these adapters for that one because that one just has a standard fitting like that to go onto uh, radiators and fill ports. There's that set. Got the dial indicator magnetic base locking there for checking the rear ends and the end play for those. Bit set. GM and Chrysler Universal three jaw puller. That thing is an awesome tool. Blue point. This is a vacuum test gauge kit which is really nice for uh, checking a couple of engine running issues, checking for vacuum, those kinds of things. We've got some smaller tools here in the back. The broken spark plug remover for Ford three valves. Gotta love those Fords, which, as you guys know, make us a ton of money. So that gets those broken spark plugs out of the Triton motors. Another older Central Tool Company magnetic tool. Brake flaring tool. 
another pulley installer, that's for the power steering pumps. Universal brake caliper tool for installing the twist style rear calipers on a lot of the other uh, vehicles, the journeys and such that has to have the, the uh, twist style push in. That one. Mac tools. This is a Mac tool. I do have one or two of those in my toolbox for the steering wheel puller set. Really nice. I picked this up actually at an estate sale and it was all there. I don't know. Must not have been a real mechanic to use it because none of those were missing. For some reason, they're always, always missing. That one is not missing. Good deal on that one. And then my refrigerant leak testing tool. This thing's awesome for finding extra leaks inside of the dash. You have evap cores leaking. You want to find that small leak. You're able to shove that into the ports. Find out if you have some refrigerant leaks into areas that you can't see. Awesome tools. Whole bunch of box set tools. Got a couple little ones. This is a the, another brake tool, but this one is a reverse thread. Some of the Toyota's Lexus, they have a reverse thread. Pain in the butt. Had to get that just for one of those. So we'll go on over to the next drawer. First, the smallest little drawer that we come to here in the middle. This is another one of the consolidated drawers because I am did not have another drawer off to the side here. I did have to put my pry bars in here, the lady fingers, and a couple of little files and tools. But normally I keep the other air tools, my air chisels, the other air tools, a couple of specialty tools for getting the window rollers off, the GM spring removal tool, and a couple of oil filter wrenches. So just a couple of little random bits, long chisel. That makes it nice. There's that drawer, and then we come to our wrench drawer. If you guys follow me on Instagram, you would have seen this drawer already. I did a before and after shot of this one. I had all my standard plastic filled cases of this one, and then I went to and got uh, hooked up by Toolbox Widget. If you guys would like to see your, your drawers consolidated and organized a little bit better for your wrenches, maybe thinking about trying those out. They're very inexpensive. Showing you here. They come as these modular pieces. They're just one and two section. Magnetic on the bottom so you can slam this drawer and nothing moves. It makes it really nice. So you get pissed off, this is the drawer you want to slam. Keeps all my wrenches in order. I know one of the complaints that they have is that, okay, you take these things out and you're not sure which size it is as compared to the other sets that we have. They have, you know, in the boxes, they've got the numbers put onto them. But these, you know, I, I kind of already know where they're at, but, you know, their complaint there. But from what I heard, they're going to be able to have attachments for these that are going to have numbers on the top of these slots here eventually. So if you guys follow Toolbox Widget, look for that probably coming out in the near future. That would be my guess on that one. So that will make it awesome. Plus, when you take one of these out, as you can see in the bottom of there, there are orange lines. So you can just bam, point right out, hey, I'm missing a wrench. So that makes it really cool. Got my metrics standards. Got my swivels, the ratcheting wrenches, the blue point. I wish Snap-on made a set of these because the Snap-on ratchet wrenches, they're just so much more fine tooth. It's nice having the blue point ones, but for some reason the Snap-on doesn't have the swivel head version. So that's why I have those. Got stubbies for doing around transfer cases and line wrenches in metrics here. Standards are over there. And then I've got some extra room. Made it really nice. If you saw my before picture, this drawer was absolutely full. So t thanks to uh, Toolbox Widget, they were able to consolidate and organize this drawer. Next drawer, I've got a couple of uh, test tools. I've got my fuel pressure test kit, all the gauge, the adapters, the pressure midline, so you can put right into the middle in line, so you can just detach it, put it in line, and test it while it's still working. 
or attach a cleaning agent to this so you can just spray it right in while it's running also. Plastic rivet installer, a couple of line tools, more of the plastic line tools, just the cheap ones you get from Craftsman. They work unless you lose them. Then you got to buy a whole new set because you can't really buy single pieces. Of course, Matco tools, the only one that I own, so is the nice tap and die set. I found this at an estate sale also, but I absolutely love it because it's all there. So I love it when tools are all there. If you guys don't have these, the 25 piece screw extractor set is a godsend. Getting those nasty little broken off studs out of the heads. These things are tough. They don't break off easily at all. I've only had to replace one single one of these and that's from me overexerting myself and breaking tools, which you get in frustrating certain moments. Left-handed drill bits, extractors, a couple of other fuel line test fittings and ports. So nice little diagnostic drawer. Got some Ford test ports for those. That makes it pretty nice. And then the final midline drawer is going to be my larger cases as well. I'm gonna scroll you guys down, make sure you can see everything. Large pipe wrench for doing those really stubborn alignments. This is the old school snap on torque meter. So when you're doing testing turning torque on rear ends, it makes it really nice to have this one just to have for inch pounds. I know the digital one you can set to a certain amount, but that one I just like seeing on an analog, an analog gauge. Serpentine belt tool, the 3 8 tech wrench. I've got my eye on the half inch one. I really want to get it because this thing is freaking awesome. Doing torque, doing turn radius, so it's a really badass tool. I'd recommend one of those to anybody who needs a torque wrench. Standard half inch torque wrench. I've got the pneumatic uh, fan clutch adapter set for taking fan clutches off. Also another awesome tool. Just, I mean, another thing to point out to you guys, I do have the long chisel. Don't use that to take fan clutches off. This tool's only like 100 bucks. Get the right one. It's a Lyle tool. Just get the right tool. Do it right the first time. Yeah. Enough raining on that one. Got a plunge grinder for cutting some walls and little sections out doing a little bit of woodwork inside an auto shop you know inner tie rod removal tool and a tool that goes onto the hub and then is able to press in an axle just because they're freaking rusty we live in the rust belt you can't get that axle to push into a hub that's what that's awesome for really great tool so go over to the left side First drawer on the left side is the junk drawer. Everybody's got one. You have to have one. I don't know why, but it's just that extra shit that everybody has that you don't know what to do with. It's all thrown in there. Skittles, yep, yep, we need those. Pens, if every mechanic doesn't have 37 of these little screwdrivers in some way, shape, or form, missing clips, bashed in, tire tool on the end of it, tread depth gauge, USB sticks. You work at a dealership, you got to do lots of updates. Better have lots of USB sticks to have the extra updates put on them. Snap on. Tape measure, which does have a lifetime warranty for a tape measure. I abuse those for some reason. All right. Next drawer is going to be my electrical and accessory drawer. I know you guys have seen a couple of the things in this drawer on other. Um, other videos that I did, I did um, the top down battery tester. That was a really cool thing to have, really inexpensive too. So, if you guys need a good battery tester tool, or a battery 101 from Top Don, it's one I recommend. The strippers, these style snap on wire strippers, oh, I guess they're Blue Point, they're a really good tool to have. Crimpers, I did a little snippet on this one for removing those really stubborn relays some relay pliers I got those off Amazon got some terminal pick tools a Lyle relay test kit 
really great for testing out relays. You're able to plug it in, plug the relay into it so it functions just as normal and then you've got all five pins that you can test or ground or give power to while it, everything's plugged in. Got a couple of testers for trailers. You got a four pin, seven pin testers, extra fuses, fuses, a couple of bulbs, sockets for older vehicles that I know that have sockets that go bad, older Jeeps, Grand Cherokees, those kind of things. Dielectric grease. I go through a two of that probably once a week because of all the electrical issues I go through. People always, always forget whenever they do electrical work or any kind of wiring work outside of the inside of the vehicle, they forget to put this stuff on. There's moisture content even under the hood. It doesn't stay dry there. Put some of that inside each electrical connector. It'll you know, help you out down the road. Trust me on that one. Extra relays, bulbs, extra fuses that are, you know, nonsense ones like these micro tens. So, yeah, there's electrical drawer, my solder, and then my uh, draw tester. That's an awesome tool to have. And don't forget the Snap-on 12-volt tester here. It's got the light, you know, just a regular circuit tester, but it also reads the exact voltage. I use that one so much, and mostly because, I don't know if you can see in this drawer, I don't have a meter. My meter took a shit, and I've held off. I've been using Ron's, and I've been using this one for right now, but I'm waiting very, very patiently. If you guys saw in the other uh, photos and videos from the Snap-on Tool Conference, they had the really fancy... Um, meter that's coming out. It's actually supposed to be out this next Wednesday. I've got one that's on the way, so you guys will get the very first review of that one. I promise. Pick you guys up here for the special drawer, because this one is the power drawer. This thing is really nice. So, as you can see, it's got all the holsters for the standard guns, but it's kind of a pain because they don't have any real attachment part for putting your electric or air ratchets. They're kind of set down in there and it it works for some of the smaller ones but some of the bigger ones they stick out too high off the tip of the drawer and it just doesn't work so that's why I had to end up putting that little holder in my hutch. Got my 3 8 and quarter inch electric ratchet. I've got the Impact screw gun, the infamous 3 8 14 4 electric impact. Also, one of the most used tools that I have. 3 8 got a PT850, and then I've got the older CTS uh, or CT6850. I like it, but as you can see, what's flashing red in the back corner, my battery is junk. So I've been waiting and waiting and waiting. Hopefully Snap-on comes out with a good replacement that's not the monster lithium one because let's all be honest, that thing's junk and I'm not going to spend all that money on something that they might come out with a newer, better, greater one. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually jump ship on that junk, get rid of it, and I'm going to go with the Milwaukee one. I've heard great reviews on it and it's going to be an awesome tool, so we'll get that one coming in the next couple weeks, test that out. I know they came out with the one key setup. One key setup. We'll see if that works. And what I really like about this drawer is we've got, let me get a light here. Here for the charge port, you've got one, two, three, four, five different outlets, all staggered. So you can put a couple of larger connectors in if you really need to. And then there is a kind of a raised plate to the bottom of this so you can hide all your cords. It is not just a big old jumbled up mess of cords. That's really awesome. And then one of the other tools that I picked up at the uh, show this last weekend was the new butane tool. That is a super nice tool. I love that one. It's got a lock button. You lock it in place, unlock it, shuts off. Super sweet butane tool. I'm going to love using that one. haven't got to use it yet, but it's going to be awesome. Alright, so that is that power drawer. Moving on down. Got the hammer drawer. 
I know this thing could be filled up with a couple of more hammers, which, you know, maybe I'll get add on my collection here soon. My awesome Wilton hammer, I beat the snot out of everything with that thing. 40 ounce hammer, dead below, just a regular uh, rubber ended one. And then I think this one is a 16 ounce, yes. 16 ounce, I don't even know why I have that one still. I got it in a set when I uh, went to school. It just came in the set. It's, I don't think I've ever used anything. It's just gotten dirty from being in the box. Wire brush, little three jaw puller, and a couple of pins that would have been from differentials. They're great for beating in the caps of U-joints. Those work awesome. And then the last and final drawer in the main part of the box, I've got some nonsense, some parts, paperwork, um, repair manuals, I've got my diagnostic um, imager, so you know the fiber optic whatever cable that's able to snake into places. This is not a Snap-on one, this is a 7899 one off of Amazon, I believe, Solar Eclipse brand. Pretty awesome, but actually works just as good for a third of the price. A couple other random 12 point sockets for some of the older stuff or stuck on lug nuts that are rounded off that you want to just beat the tool on to get them off. Now before I go into the left cabinet I am going to talk some about my computer, monitor, everything set up here. So I do have my monitor which is actually just a Roku smart TV. So it's a TV, it's got HDMI inlet, it's not a fancy TV, it's probably a $120 TV that I had sitting around from someplace else. As you can see, the Roku function. So I've had my boy come in, he can watch Netflix or whatever he wants while I get to work on a weekend. So there's that one. And then you guys all wanted to know how I mounted that TV. Did I get the snap-on mount? Did I get <clears throat> some other kind of TV or monitor mount? No, you might be disappointed by this, but I'll show you here when I take this little TV off. I literally put two bolts into the back of the TV, two bolts into the existing holes for the slots and dots, did about four or five lines of mechanics wire, and then the wide tips of these bolts catch onto that there, and that's what hangs my monitor nice and level. This box doesn't go anywhere, it doesn't move, so I know you guys can make fun of me, whatever, for having that not mounted correctly, but it's not going anywhere. So, it's there, nice and easy, about the cheapest version of a mount you are going to find. So there that one is. Now, my actual setup here, I have a Bluetooth keyboard with a Bluetooth mouse. Everything works great on the computer like that. And then with the computer, it is over here inside of the cabinet. Let me get a light here for you. It is a small little Intel Core i3 computer. Runs Windows. It's got USB ports here in the back, sound and audio. It's got like six inputs in the back with an HDMI input. So that's in here. Now, thing I came to find out that it does have Wi-Fi capabilities, but if I mount it in here, this is like a little Faraday cage. So when it closes, instantly no Wi-Fi. So what did I do? I plugged in a USB Wi-Fi extender. So that Wi-Fi extender up there has a dual band, 2.4 in, 5 gigahertz inlet to it, so it's able to get both bands of Wi-Fi that I have coming in here at the shop. It goes down into the computer, and then also I found out that once my cabinet closed, I no longer had Bluetooth function. <laughs> my mouse and my keyboard wouldn't work. So what did I do for that? I plugged in this USB splitter, inland, whatever one you want to get powered USB 3.1 splitter. It plugs into the back of the computer, comes over to here, and I've got my Bluetooth little adapter here for my keyboard and mouse, which also allows me to have three more ports. So if I want to plug something else into to 
you know, a flash drive or something, I don't have to open my cabinet to access that. So that comes up here so I can just plug anything USB in that would plug right into my computer. So that is the setup for my whole computer thing. It runs Windows 10. I run all of my forms through Google Drive to track everything for my hours. So we will move on <clears throat> into this cabinet. Again, I've got the same story with this cabinet. I've got the module ready. I've got the light ready up top here at the snap-on. One and a half or two foot light, one of the two, the LED. So whenever I get the switches in for those, you will see that in the top drawer. This one does pull out. I've got another AC die kit, die injection for whatever. Uh, this is the oil pressure gauge test kit. I've got another um, dial gauge, dial calipers, Mopar media multimeter tester for testing Bluetooth function, wireless function, Wi-Fi. That's a cool little kit. It's just a special tool through Mopar. I've got my Blue Point code tester. This is really nice for having just to take out on the lot. Say somebody really needs, hey, you come just scan this real quick for me so I can able able to run out, check the code real quick without having to get the Zeus or the um, iPad and everything set up. And then the Drill Doctor. Watch one of my previous videos. This is an awesome tool to have. If you guys really want, I can show you how to use it. It's a little bit complicated, but it's able to save your drill bits. It makes them last a really, really long time. Great tool to have. You guys need to have one if you do a lot of drilling. Then in the fixed drawer, as you can see, I sh showed you the computer. It's there. The only thing that I'm going to say about that computer that I found out that I don't like so far is that it's small, and which is nice, but there's no CD input. So I'll have to get a USB CD input and drive and then just to, or DVD drive, just to uh, kind of sit here along the edge of it. So back in here I've got some gloves, the snap-on matte finish cleaner. I am going to do a whole other little video here on how to clean the box. I've done a couple different little tests to it. This is coming out on top so far. And then gloves. I've got my jumper that I tested in one of my previous video from Audu. Got the flip socket set for removing um, stubborn wheels because these are extra grip set socket. They've got the uh, teeth in them that grip into rounded off lug nuts. Nice tool to have. And then the biggest time saving tool there is, the SVT SRAD 272A, the cooling system filler. Makes it so nice, especially when we're doing these water pumps on the diesels. You're able to fill the cooling system up and then not have to bleed it because this is all pre-bled. It sucks all the air out of the system, inputs the coolant into the system, and saves you a bunch of time, especially on a diesel that takes forever to warm up. All right, and then just a empty case back there in the back, but there that is. And then this one is a power cabinet. So back here in the back, I do have two outlets on the back there. One is going to be a plug for my light. The other one is going to be the plug that goes into the computer. There's that one. Now this one is another power cabinet, so it's got a power drawer in it. Again, the five gang of outlets that you have here. I didn't point this out, <clears throat> but in the other drawer it also has it. it. has two USB inputs as well. So you're able to charge your things that just take USB, like my GB70 just has a USB plug for it. So that's cool. My Milwaukee battery charger, another battery charger for the 7214.4s. And then the other power tools. Milwaukee drill. I've got Milwaukee quarter inch impact. This is one that I also just picked up at that tool show this last weekend. This is the uh, buffer Rolock 
adapter, grinder, whatever tool for 14.4. It's got the buffing wheels. You can put the roll lock discs on it as well. Looking forward to using that one, especially inside of vans, places I need to grind grounds, ground the head off of bolts, something like that. It's going to do an awesome job. Pneumatic rivet gun. Really nice. And of course, my right angle grinder. Pretty simple drawer. This one, however, it does not have the false bottom floor in it, so you can see as all the wires kind of, you know, just hanging out everywhere there. So, you know, you sacrifice it in this one, but I'm okay with that. That one closes. I've got another little electrical drawer where I have my wires, extra, you know, different size wires, looms, connectors, butt connectors, electrical terminal tools. And these are really nice to have, the really fine tipped ones for getting pins out of terminals. If you guys are Mopar techs, this electrical test lead kit is also really, really nice. So it's got the different pins, male and female, of a whole bunch of different styles, sizes, that you can plug your pins into the connectors for testing. So you can have it there, and then you can, or you can plug them into this and have a little connector where you can connect them, disconnect them, open, close, or give them 10, 500, or 10,000 ohm resistance values. Really cool test kit. Look into getting that one but Mopar guys find it in your shop and actually use it. Down here, uh, a couple of little paperwork rewards. Uh, this is just, you know, kind of throwing stuff in. Junk stuff, got my inductive test light, and then this is a new one, the Astro Pneumatic Tool Company. It is a uh, rivet, or a uh, riv nut installer. It's a hand riv nut installer. All the different riv nuts, the sizes, hand riv nut installer makes it really nice for putting riv nuts into frames. Rather than trying to use a bolt, a nut, it's a pain in the butt. Last one is just got a couple extra mats and extra space to grow. So, there we go. As you guys saw, I did lose a couple of drawer space there, but I gained a lot of drawer size, and then my cabinets, I've got plenty of room to grow from here on out. Here at this point in my career, I'm more along the lines of just growing in, you know, like the case and the specialty tools. So I've got plenty of room for those. I'm not gonna be getting a whole lot more wrench sets, screwdriver sets, you know, the little stuff that fills up those drawers. I'm gonna be putting more cases in that fills up this stuff. So, let's move on to my tool cart. Get you guys set up for that. So here we are with my Snap-on tool cart. This thing is dual purpose. I use it as a cart and I also use it as a little extension to my box to have some extra tools and, I don't know, necessities. So first thing on the side, I do have another little holster tool for any of my electric or air tools that I have out. It makes it really nice for having those there and my air hose so my air hose and tools aren't you know, banging up at the edge and messing up the corners of this real quick. So that makes it really nice. Here on the top, it does have a top that just closes and locks there. The drawers are able to open just like a Master Series box and to lock those, that right there, and unlock. So it's got a couple of division areas. You have your central spot and then there's a couple of dividers here. Now in the sides, there's a foam insert or you can take it out and that's where, let me grab a light again because this lit area sucks. And this is where you can put your long pry bars or long screwdrivers. If you look down in through there, it goes all the way down through. So another little addition where you can have that, or you can just have that foam pad set in there, and then you can throw extra bolts, screws, wires, lines, divide it off. So there's that. My first drawer is gonna be some of my 
uh, glues, tapes, O-rings, paint, you know, a little touch-up paint, all my RTV, painter's tape, little odds and ends, sticking stuff places. Then I'm going to have a lot of the work that I do on um, ProMasters conversion vans, this is the kind of little parts for those, some antennas, a lot of LEDs, because a lot of those little cheap LEDs go out all the time. Got some Velcro, double side on that one. Felt pads for cabinets, extra wires, leads, LEDs for fog lights, LEDs all day, because that's the majority of what I do. A couple of the little LED splice kits. There we go. Bottom drawer is going to be another kind of junk drawer. We got zip ties for days, all kinds of different zip ties, ones that have Christmas trees on the end, clips, just regular zip ties, a couple of other lock rod kits, pieces, self tappers, we got some interior door panel parts, and then also odds and ends, clips that are known for breaking on normal things. Uh, gaskets that are known for going out like EGRs on two sevens and three fives. Yeah, everybody's got these little tools that you need that always lose, like the transmission line clips. I got a whole bunch of those in there. So I go through that probably two to three times a week. Everybody needs to have one. And then on the bottom, just a couple other random things. I've got my grease gun. I've got an extra window blind, the burp cup, which I really don't use that anymore now that I have my uh, coolant filler. So, got some fender covers right there to so not scratch up the customer's cars. And really, that's it for the cart. This side doesn't have anything, just the handle, the warning sticker. But seriously, guys, this is an awesome thing to have if the side of your carts has slot and dot, slots and dots be able to put your tools on there to the side. So, that's it. In all of its glory, that's what you guys were waiting for, the toolbox store. Well, that's about all I've got for you guys. If there was something in this toolbox that you would like, an extra part number, if you would like me to go over with you again, ask me questions about it, feel free to leave a, a response down below or you can get a hold of me through my email, which will be in the description, as well as my Instagram account. You can message me instantly through Instagram all the time. I've got my phone on me all the time. I'm able to make responses usually within a couple of hours. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask. I'm here for you guys. I enjoy doing this stuff and explaining anything to my subscribers, to you know my friends, whatever you guys need for this kind of tool stuff, I am glad to help. So. Without further ado, also the giveaway that we're going to be doing, here is the front of the shirt. Like I said, it is a shop shirt, Snap-on brand, and we saw the back earlier. I've got it in multiple sizes, so if you guys are the one who wins the giveaway, I've got your size, don't worry about it. I've got the shipping, don't worry about that one either. So, what you need to do to win the giveaway, you need to be subscribed to me. Be subscribed, turn on that bell notification so you get notified when I come out with awesome new content. So that's number one, be subscribed. Number two, you have to be subscribed to me on Instagram. I give regular updates on there at least two to three times a week. Put more content on there. I put updates, you know, more information about, you know, just the day-to-day -day things that doesn't have to do with videography or, you know, just quick little cool things that I find. So number two is you have to be Subscribe to me on Instagram as well. So number three, how you sign up for it, there is going to be a link down in the description. That link will take you to a sign up page where you'll put in your screen name and your email address which will only be used to contact you in the case that you win. So this next, uh, I think it's Saturday. This next Saturday at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I will be doing a live stream from my house and we will do the giveaway there. So you have until that time to get your entries in, get subscribed, get signed up to what you need to for the giveaway. Really that's pretty simple. All you have to do is those three things 
and you're entered to the, for the giveaway. The shirt is a $50 value. It's high-end shirt. It is from Snap-on. So there's that value. And then during the giveaway, during the live stream, I will be doing a couple other giveaways as well. Maybe a couple little tool things, a hat, a knife, something like that. So if you want to be able to win those, you have to be present at the giveaway. I'll do or during the live stream. So you have to be present for that. You do not have to be present on the live stream to win the shirt. You just have to have your name in, your email, so I can contact you. So that's about all I've got today, guys. Thank you again. I really appreciate all your support. Thanks for checking out my awesome box. There's going to be lots more content to come on that. Lots more upgrades, nifty little things. So I appreciate it. And thanks for tuning in. You guys stay awesome.